Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Gear City with me, Alpha Pi Omega and Republic Motors. So once again I would like to apologize for uh, a s sort of a sickly voice in the last episode. I did not realize how bad it sounded until I finished recording and checked it on YouTube. So apology about that, I hope it wasn't as bad as it seems to me. Anyway, in this episode we're gonna do a small recap and then we're gonna jump forward because we want to do the expansion that we've been talking about for such a long time. But before we do that, I'd like to check how the population is doing in the United States. Okay, so there is a city down here, New Orleans, that could be good. Yeah, and there are to San Francisco and Los Angeles, which are very far away though. So that would mean going haywire. And if we look at it this way, the cities that are nearby, wait, are, yeah, those are Canadian, but they're very small. So I don't think it's worth it at this point. Though Richmond, we might expand to Richmond, just an Atlanta, and maybe Memphis if need comes to be. Denver is quite far away. Now, what I want to do is, I think our production is, oh, okay, our production is not going at max anywhere. So I think we might want to just start upgrading our factories a bit. So if I did a, small upgrade to the factory in New York, it would be 1.6 million. The medium one would give me three extra lines, but it would cost almost 5 million, and the max would give me 12 lines, but the cost would be 8 million. What about Philadelphia? Let's wait, oh, actually no. One line is 2 million. Three lines, six million, yeah, that's not cheaper at all. And Pittsburgh. We definitely need a new line for the New Yorker, so I'll just probably upgrade the factory in the New York and make it slightly better. So if we upgraded the factory, five, five million is a big investment, but I think that it's worth it. Uh, it's gonna take not much, just five months. When are we going to get the New Yorker? New Yorker in three months. Okay, so it's gonna be a tad late, but I'm fine with that. So, okay, let's get the factory upgrade medium upgrade. So it's gonna take five months. That was a big investment. And in Europe, we have a factory that is decent. It is. Now, I was actually considering that we wouldn't um, build a new factory in Zurich, and we would just expand the one that we have in London. So that's not a wholly bad idea. If we added five extra lines, it would be 3.2 million, and it would give us a production of, basically double the production that we have there, which I think is not going at max at all. So yeah, we have, yeah, we have a production gap there. So that's not a bad idea. Maybe even three lines would be enough. Well, okay. For now, I think we are fine, so let's just continue. Okay, our cash flow is minus 900,000. Uh, the one time expenses were 600,000, and the construction is a million. So we are doing good, but we're gonna bleed out a bit of money right now. So let's just bleed a bit more, <laughs> I say. Okay, now we're at minus 346,000. That is decent. Uh, we really need to tone down the Natalias, though. We really, really, really need to tone down the Natalias. So I'm gonna turn down the production everywhere where we have it. Uh, let's go with, okay. 
80 here, that's what I wanted to do. I don't know if it's 90. Okay, 83 in London, and we are producing none in New York, and in Philadelphia we're producing 340, so let's go with 280 to improve the quality a bit. In Pittsburgh we're producing 200, so let's go with 100, just plain old 100, and see what it's gonna do. That should boost our sales significantly as we are going to tap into the reserves yes we have started taking down the reserves which is good the cash flow has thus increased and things are looking good research complete new yorker 1914 is finished awesome so this is going to be a brand new very expensive car let's check it out uh as it is New Yorker 1914. The specific rating is 54. It's targeted at ultra wealthy people. And it's a town car. It costs $3,352. So I think I'm gonna just assign one dinky little production line to it. Let's say. Wait, Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, we're gonna want to check Pittsburgh for this. Pittsburgh. Okay, we're producing 100 Natalias here and 70 Rudolphs. So if I went with 80 Natalias and made that one production line and we started producing New Yorkers. One production line, we can produce up to 100, I think. 20 will be enough, and I'll just let them sell across the world for $600, $500. I'm not even sure if they will sell, honestly, for this kind of price. It's targeted at an ultra wealthy, so it might, it might not. We're going to see. So, uh, New Yorker, we produced 20 and we sold all of them and we missed 12 sales that actually even bumped our cash flow up so these are these are super highly expensive cars that we are just sending around the world yeah it has the best type rating of them all it's it's just a limousine for the ultra wealthy so let's go with with this theme and produce 30 and just keep it as it is I don't, you know, this is one of the vehicles that I'm not even sure if it's going to pay itself off because uh, we're still 896,000 in depth on it. So, you know, let's see. Let's produce one more month. Urgent action acquired. Okay, so we're selling these. We're selling everything else. Okay, we did not sell the New Yorkers this time. Some national government hosting our factories and branches have entered a major military conflict. We have shut down our operations in these areas and sales have halted in the region. No one is sure how long these conflicts will go on. Please see your memos at the newspaper and the newspaper for more information. So the First World War has started. And check them periodically for updates. As for our factories and branches, what do you want us to do? So cut marketing and close branches and close factories. Leave everything alone, I'll handle it. Thank you. So cut marketing. And what is this? With conflict around the world, we have an option to manufacture munitions in war-torn factories. While we will make money from this, we also run an increased risk of factor destruction. Manufacturing munitions in foreign countries will reduce our risk of factory confiscation, but also reduce our image ratings. Your selection here will override previous selections. You cannot change your munitions manufacturing setting outside of this action memo. 
If you produce munitions, you will lose the ability to manufacture war contracts at these factories. When the war is over, munitions manufacturing will end and factory will return to normal. No munitions. It's okay. So, oh, damn. Okay, so we shut down the production in all of Europe. That's interesting. I thought that we wouldn't have a problem selling cars in England, but obviously I was wrong. So the branch is here. The cost of 72,000 and we're estimated, estimating a monthly cost of 5,000. We know the war will take on for some four years. So that's times 12. So it is probably best to actually close all of these branches and just keep the factory on. Okay, this, this puts my plan into jeopardy. Conflict. Okay, so Amsterdam and Rotterdam are still okay. But the rest of these... Canada... Oh, Canada is also involved in this. So the United States will also eventually get involved in this war. So... That's interesting. What's in the news? Europe at war. In June, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo. This event would be the catalyst for a massive worldwide war, which some are calling the World War. Austria-Hungary believed that the Serbian government was behind the assassination. As such, they have declared war on Serbia. In reaction to this, Russia has declared war on Austria-Hungary, which has caused Germany to mobilize and declare war on Russia. Germany has requested that France, who is allied with Russia, remain neutral, but Germany would then invade Luxembourg and France. Belgium officials refused to allow German troops to pass, and as such, Germany has declared war on Belgium as well. In response to the invasion of Belgium, the British have declared war on Germany. Europe is now a mess, with all major powers declaring war on each other. And we finish the Panama, Panama Canal. Okay, so we are actually going to close all the branches. This is going to hurt our sales a bit, but oh, what can you do? And I guess then there's no point in actually selling, selling the tower. So we're going to have to test this theory on, on the premise of... Uh, uh, on the premise of uh, United States. It's the only place where we can do it now. As Canada is also at war. Everyone is. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, I don't think that the London factory... Yeah, it, it is shut down during due to the war. So let's see how we're doing here. Okay, we're making profit. That's good. Uh, we're selling way less of these, so I need to need to turn that down. But that's due to the war. So let's just produce 10 for now and make them quality goods. To the factory cost R&D Locations with new competition. And are we we're missing some sales? But it's better to miss some sales than to overproduce. Okay, our cash flow now is 751,000. We sold 21 New Yorkers, produced 10 reserves are 16. That's good. I could produce more Vados. Okay, let's produce slightly more vados. How much? 84. Wow. Okay. So we can produce way more of them. Uh, producing. Maximum 150. 
and it should make it better. I want to we get our new cars. 860,000. Okay, so our production is increasing. We need to focus on the American market now. We actually have I actually have excess production now and the money, so let's uh, keep opening the branches. I was looking at the map and you see that there was some good places. We're only interested in green and above, so you are out of the game. Louis will. Right. So here, strict. Now let's just do it one by one. That's going to be better. So we got 175,164,4128. I think the cutoff for me should be 200,000. And there are, well, there's new Orvins down here, but that is so far. That is so far, I don't want to even go there. So let's just go with this one, 172, 175,000 people. I'm gonna increase the size of the branch here. And actually someone had a good, um, a good point that I might want to increase uh, the branches that I have in the bigger cities. So let's redesign the one in Philadelphia, the one that we have in New York. To increase the size of it. And also in Chicago, because that's really big branch or really big city and it deserves a bigger branch. So we're gonna see if our sales in these cities are gonna go up. I hope so. I really do hope so. Uh, oh, and yeah, we finished the flame on Mark II. So that means, I think we are not doing any chassis engine gearbox. That means that we can now redesign uh, the old timer that is known by the name of Victor. Victor. We actually made quite a lot of money on Victor. So I think the river deserves a good redesign. We're still selling it and it's still popular, which is awesome. Victor 1911 Touring. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new generation. It's going to have, wait, it's a, it's a Touring. And I believe that Tourings have a flat desire for everything with a little spike on the power and handling. Okay, auxiliary and stuff like that is good. So we have what it takes. So modified vehicle, uh, Victor, new generation. We're gonna go with the spine. We're gonna use the flame mark two. Okay, overall for the nine compared to 30. So about the engine and a manual gearbox. So yeah, this is gonna cost 100% of the cost and Right of the bat, it has a specific of 56, so that is awesome. But we're gonna have to modify the body here. I want to have a new one. So we had the Sturm, Sturm, or Sturm body, and this one looks great, but this is definitely like 1930s, maybe even 1940s. So let's look which one would be the most. I guess this one. Uh, this one looks slightly older, but it doesn't have the gauze. Okay, let's let's use this one. The Harpson. So I'm gonna redesign a Victor. Uh, I'm gonna first take a little little peek at it, uh, which I of course forgot again. 
So it's with the vehicle Victor. And once I'm done with that, I'll be back and start redesigning. Okay, so I took the picture and now we can do it. Sorry about that. I always get confused in these menus. So Victor, new generation, as was mentioned, the spine, the flame mark two and the manual gearbox. Let's design it and design the body, customize, and we're going to go with the Hapson. So once I'm done with the design, I'll be back. Okay, I think we are finished. The second generation of Victor is ready. So let's finish it up and see what this is going to be like. Um, it's very expensive. So this is probably going to be a 1917 project. I don't think we'll be able to, to get it during 1916. So let's save it. And the specific is 56 which is really nice. I think that the original Victor had like 48, something like that. 46 actually, so it's, it's six more. And uh, it, the price is not very expensive. Price is not very expensive. We got, we got 3,365,000 profit on that. And the cost was 2400 Wow, this one is actually cheaper than the original model. That's really interesting to see. So what could we play with here? I think I might try... Well, the Turing's though were not that, that good. But I might also try to produce two models and see how they will fare compared to each other. So let's uh, keep this one as it is. Yeah, testing is maxed, design is maxed. I think I might even go as go slightly higher if I... Yeah, I could, I could just max it out and get even higher. But I want to do that. Let's sell this one for 2400 bucks. That is decent. Uh, wait, 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 wait. This is going to be... Design focus. This is going to be a 1917 car. So we need a slower project base. Okay, if, we, if we're willing to wait till January 1917, we're going to get down to a price of 692000 that is great. So this car is targeted on males greater than 55. If we went with females, it wouldn't really be that good. But males adore this car. Females would like... Females would like safety more. Fuel more. Less importance on power and more on handling. Okay, let's keep it like this. We're gonna call this. Uh, we're gonna call this the P version as well. So this is going to be Victor 19, actually 1917P. And I'm gonna design an additional trim, which I'm gonna try to 
make it cheaper. And that one is going to be G, a lower one. And we're gonna hope that I can make it cheaper. So let's say we want it 200 bucks cheaper. So let's turn down the style a bit, innovation, and the luxury a bit, comfort a bit. Let's turn down design focus on cargo, dependability. Yeah, we are already almost there. Swift is not that important, so we can. Damn, I should tone that down really significantly. We're down to 53. As far as testing is gonna go, we're gonna turn down fuel testing. Uh, performance, let's keep performance up. I'm gonna go down with utilities and uh, reliability. And could I, if I went down with the market demographic testing, could I get to 2000? Yeah, I could. Okay, not exactly to 2000, but 2001, and we're going to have a specific rating of 50. So the 1917G is going to be 400 bucks cheaper. And it's going to be 400 bucks cheaper. And or three hundred ninety nine dollars cheaper, and its rating is going to be lowered by six. But I think that is doable. So let's build this one, nineteen seventeen G. Build it. And wow, do we have a lot of cars in the pipeline? We have well, we have two versions of Natalia coming in fourteen months. One version of Rudolf and one version of Lado. And in an additional year, we're gonna get Victor, two variants. And that's that. We're gonna have completely switched around all of our cars. So that is awesome. That is awesome. Now, did I or did I not open new branches? I did not, did I? The only one that might be worth it is New Orleans. But let's hit New Orleans. Let's just make a small branch there. Uh, find New Orleans. Wait, those are factories. And we're gonna try to max out our profitability. So, New Yorker here. We're selling it for six and a half elsewhere. So, let's sell it for seven. To here, Natalia's 3,000, okay, 4,000, Rudolph's, okay, 550, look at the distancing cost, that's just insane. I think this office is not going to sell anything. And while we're at it, let's just keep at it. Okay, so we're still having a positive cash flow. I'm producing a bit more Vlados than we sell. We are producing way less Natalias than we sell, which is what's keeping us afloat. Although we're actually paid 225000 in taxes this month. Uh, Rudolphs, could, we could produce more of them and we could produce more Victors. And we could bump up the production of New Yorkers. So I'm going to bump up the production of Rudolphs, Victors, and New Yorkers and drop Vladus a bit. Best town car, the Republican Motors New Yorker. Nice, good, good, good. How are we doing at that car anyway? 
I've been selling it for a couple of months, so is it? It's dropping slowly, but this is this is more like a hobby project. I'm not sure if they will ever make enough money, but you know, it's a it's a way how to cover the plants. So what did I want to do? I wanted to produce more of you. So let's produce 15 of you. We did want to produce more Rudolphs than we. Yeah. And more Victors and Vasclados. Okay, we actually can't produce. Well, we can. If I turn you down like this, go to 120 and. this and now I have an extra line for you so let's see what it's gonna do with our income it may get insanely high 852,000 yeah and we're starting to lose some missiles on Natalia and Rudolph damn 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 but the warranties costs are increasing so are the storage costs so we need to be super careful here Oh, 1915. Breakfast crash. Park Civic to hold party. Allied forces declare war on the Ottoman Empire. So that means the Ottomans are now at conflict as well, right? Yeah. So we could only sell in Italy or in Spain. And none of these are extremely profitable. We could still sell in Rotterdam, that's interesting. And in Sweden and Norway, but nowhere else. So one more month. Okay, we lost 651,000. What the hell? Reserves. Did the United States enter the war? Vehicle sales, new component design. Oh, air suspension system. A new vehicle body type. But what happened? We didn't pay any taxes. The vehicle sales have plummeted for some reason. Let's give it one more month and yeah, the sales have just plummeted across the board. Okay, so I'll need to cut the production. Because right now we're actually we're producing about double of what is selling. I think that might be the economy taking a hit as war is now raging in the world. But yeah, that doesn't really bother us that much. We really need to just cut it out. How far are you? 10 months. So we need to survive another 10 months, then we'll have brand new cars. And then I guess, then I guess it's, it's a hold to the end of the war. And we'll see. How good is the economic growth? It's, it's claiming that it's great across the board. The only places that don't have that is Arabia. Yeah, I would like to start maybe designing some cars for J Japan market or Japanese market. That would be pretty cool. And I thought about starting a company there, but when you look at that, it would be super hard. 155 in 1916. So right now they can buy a car for about 600 bucks. So last turn. Yeah, we really need to do something with our production. So that's going to be the task for the next episode where we are going to try to lower our production or maybe even halt it because right now for example for Natalia's we have so much in reserve we don't need to produce any and yeah same for Victor 
So these cards will all need to go. These will all need to go. And the only one we're actually doing really good on is the New Yorker. <laughs> that one is selling slightly. Slightly better than I expected. Well, no. It's actually being sold at a loss. <laughs> Great. Okay. So I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Gear City with me, Alpha Biomega and Republic Molders.